All right, cool. So first of all, Tim, thank you so much that you could um, make it for my interview. And yeah, sure. I'm really I'm stoked to, to have you on my show. Um, so tell us something about yourself. Um, all right. Uh, well, my name is Tim. I am 30 something year old. I think 31 right now. I always <laughs> don't forget know your that. own age. <laughs> no, I always forget that, man. It's like, I don't know why, but it's, it's, it's a thing that. with me. Yes. Um, I am living in Germany right now. I did a PhD here and now working in the university as a researcher. So we're doing semantic web stuff. And in my free time, I do YouTube uh, stuff about JavaScript and software development and video games. Video games, the most important one. Uh, yeah, that is the most important <laughs> part, right? <laughs> so I saw your, your YouTube channel. It's like pretty old. Um, have you always um, want to, wanting to be doing uh, like a serious YouTube thing? Uh, no, not really. So I actually initially created my YouTube channel to keep the tabs on my likes and my history, which was like 11 years ago or something when the YouTube was just starting. Basically, I was like, oh, I need to save all those memes and stuff in, in my folder, you know. <laughs> so um, in the very beginning, I think like I maybe posted something was like silly cat video or I don't know, uh, maybe my like uh, I, I used to. Video. Yeah, yeah, guitar video, right. So I used to, uh, I finished the jazz guitar music school. So we had like my uh, graduation concert where I played. So I was like, yeah, I'll put that on YouTube. <laughs> of course, nobody watched it. It's just, you know, it's fine. Yeah, but it's uh, blown yeah, up because uh, then... yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much um, content. But I never started seriously thinking about YouTube before, I think like four years ago. And Even then, I had first created a video game focused channel. It was like early game view. It's a completely separate channel where I was talking purely about video games and it has like 600 subscribers or something. And it wasn't really, you know, I, I think I worked on it two years and it didn't really take off that much, but I was just doing it for fun and it was okay. And then at some point I, I decided to record uh, software development videos because there was like a bunch of guys who was asking me the same questions over and over. I was like, okay, screw it. I'll just record a video and just, yeah. you know, tell you, okay, go watch. I already explained everything here. And I announced it on Reddit that I'm going to be doing this series called building products with JavaScript. And it was, you know, going from the ground up, going from the command line, Git, uh, testing, all basically everything you need to know to build the whole complete, app, right? And it somehow blew up. I got like a few thousand followers just from announcing that on Reddit. And there was people who were watching it. Um, amusing thing is that there was uh, geometrically more people watching the first episode than the last one. I think the first has like few, like 20,000 views or something. And the last one, last one has like 200 or something. Yeah, I guess that always so, happens. People are not into long series, man. It's like, I tried doing long series. So I like, I did that one. I saw, okay, people like it. People ask me to do more stuff. I was like, okay, let's try doing another like long one, right? So I did the building data science with JavaScript where we did this like sort of data processing pipeline. And again, the first episode was like three or 4,000 views and the last one was like 300. I was like, yeah, I was just gonna do one off episodes because you know it seems to be more engaging to people. Mm -hmm. Just short, shorter, more condensed things. Well, so far it seems to be working out, I guess. Yeah, there's like uh, a certain percentage of people who will not like engage as much with with knowledge as other people. I mean, it take no. I think it takes you know discipline to actually watch through the whole thing because uh -huh. I, I'm also like this. You know, I, I there are some courses that I started but dropped midway, and I was like, eh, I'm too lazy for that. But also so like I, uh, <laughs> conferences and stuff like that. It's um, said that there's are 99 of the people who don't do anything with the information. Yeah, given. that's 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 also just true. Just to, like, to feel good about themselves. And but no, I mean it depends. Kind of you know, I would say that I would say there's like two reasons. Two reasons to be in a conference and uh, like first reason is to actually learn something. But the thing is that I found, at least in my experience, you never learn from the actual talks because the talks are something that are usually given about the topics that are already on the Internet. And you can mm -hmm. just go ahead and read it or, you know, watch the video afterwards. And you usually won't find too much new information there. 
It's an introduction is, mostly. Yes, exactly. And what's actually the most educating part is then catching that speaker who was talking about interesting stuff and just talking to him. Those guys usually have incredible insight. This mm -hmm. is like one thing and the other thing is networking. You just go there to meet new people, to drink beer yeah. and to <laughs> hang out. Like, Definitely. There's nothing wrong with that. It's really awesome. And I met a lot of really cool guys like this and like, you know, expanded my business network quite a lot by through doing that. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't think a lot of people and I don't think it's a, it's a correct reason to go to conferences to educate yourself on the topics that speakers give. So I think it's um, it's a very far goal basically <laughs> yeah well well i guess for students who have to learn a lot it's it's useful to uh, maybe yeah maybe if you're just starting out that's true i have not considered that so I, I, again you know my my perspective might be very skewed because i've been doing this for 15 years or something <laughs> yeah so it's um, a bit hard to put myself in a beginner I'm, I'm just in the game for like four years and Plus, plus another two of of hobbyist uh, programmer. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 good. It's you know that's already something. Yeah, that's that's true. The past two years, I've been going crazy, like insane. <laughs> it's just like I'm I'm just like a sponge and soaking up all that information about about. That's that's exactly. the most fun part about the internet, right? There's yeah, so yeah. much stuff. Like I, I remember I had problems a lot with that because I started working when I was like, or like I started software developing where I was like seven years old or something. And the only internet we had was like dial up with uh, um, 600, uh, 6,400 bots bottom, which was like, you know, this like super slow, super old mm -hmm. things. And uh, literally all the information I had was like in this like super crappy Russian magazines that had like very outdated info. Oh, wow. And the way that I found out about stuff was through the IRC chat with some like random English speaking hackers were always grumpy and always like, oh, this guy again. It's like, come on, help me, dude. <laughs> Please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So, going back to your YouTube channel, um, you now have a video podcast, like a news uh, podcast called BXJS. So, JS is, of course, JavaScript, but what does the BX stand for? Uh, yeah, sure. That's a really simple one. Uh, so we had this building products with JavaScript, right? At some point, mm -hmm. it transformed into building X with JavaScript because we switched oh. to the episodic manner, you know, like what I was saying exactly from like longer things to a short one-off episode. So we built something with JavaScript. And because build something with JavaScript doesn't sound as nice as BXJS, so I was like, yeah, let's just do BXJS. <laughs> so it's a really simple one. <laughs> yeah. I think for newcomers it would be like what the hell? <laughs> uh, it sounds fancy, you know. That's, that's all I. That's yeah. all I want to know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So actually, a funny story. Um, like when I had an internship, like one year ago, um, like my internship mate, the the other guy who was also a student, he always knew like. 20 times uh, more more than me. He always knew like new libraries, uh, internationali internationalization uh, and stuff like that. He, he always knew a solution for everything. I was like, how does this guy know all these things? And I think he was just browsing GitHub constantly. But like now that I found you, I can be at the same level as him because you basically compile a list of all the useful and interesting things. No, I mean, I think it's, uh, so first of all, the, you should stop comparing yourself to others. Like, uh, mm -hmm. From my experience, all people are, like all developers approach their work differently. So you will never achieve anything by looking at others. And, oh, they're so much faster or so much better than me, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own unique approaches and their own way of thinking. So it's it's better to focus on what you you do best rather than you know sit and compare yourself to other things. Yeah, how can I be like him? <laughs> uh, like just seriously, you, you will just waste time. I had like we had students like this who were just like you know constantly comparing themselves to others. Like oh this guy is so much faster, I will never reach him. And then she just like you know going around depressed and not doing anything for two weeks. And you're like come on man, you know you're you're a smart guy. You could have done that. Just don't do this. So I think it's way more productive to just focus on uh, your way of working 
it doesn't like in the long run like when 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 you gain the experience when you gain the uh, foundations and understanding of the language that you're working primarily the speed doesn't really matter that so uh like it what matters is like um how do i put it okay so let me put it this way one of my most productive days in software development has been days when i was just like okay i don't know how to solve this so i'm just going to put this and go to a shop or go to the city center and you know go to a mm -hmm. drink a beer or something and then i came back and then i figured out that okay i can actually remove half of the app and redo it like this which will be 10 times simpler and five times faster and this is i think what really makes the software development exciting at least for me you know it's, it's not about the make it fast make it work right now it's, it's more about try to figure out the best way of course if you have enough time to do that obviously <laughs> it's not always the case in business unfortunately <laughs> but Yeah, so I would say do not try to be fast, do not try to keep up with uh, all the stuff, do not try, like, it's not necessary, right? So just do what you do and try to get good. At it. Yeah, right. But it wasn't like I was comparing myself to him, but it was like I was kind of like, as as my talent, it was more like planning and uh, making tasks and stuff like that. And I was really organized at that, so... The other guy kind of liked that, so that, that's how we kind of uh, became a team in that sense. I see. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. It was like, I also want to know stuff, like, <laughs> not co even comparing me to him, but like, I w in the future I need to know stuff so I can actually be l like the lead programmer of, of another team. So it's, sometimes it, it will be necessary to know uh, a lot of things. Sure, but that just comes with experience. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you know you have to uh, like try to learn it as fast as possible. That's not going to make you a lead developer. <laughs> Trust <Yeah>. me. <laughs> I thought I, like there was a point in my career when I thought that as well. I was like, I'll just learn all those 25 different languages and I'm going to be like a lead developer in all of them. Never worked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And so also the thing with with your channel, it. it I found it just a little bit too late because uh, in college we got this assignment that we needed to do to find two technologies every week and mm -hmm. kind of describe them. So let's say uh, pusher.com uh, where you can uh, use a SaaS software to to do all kinds of stuff. I, I would describe things like that. But I would spend like half an hour each week to actually find those things. And I only had like maybe 40 hours to, to work on the project. So mm. uh, it took a long time. But if I just watched your your uh, videos every Saturday, I would be able to find something cool like every week without any trouble. And all my classmates were also like having trouble. So it's kind of interesting that they had that assignment. We actually got a grade based on, on, on those things. That, yeah, that sounds like a very weird assignment. Like, what's the purpose of it? It's basically building a habit to uh, keep up with the tech world. Because there, that's not, that, there that's are not a lot me. of How students you... who are just focused on, on the course material and that's all they do, literally. No, but I mean, that's not how you really keep up with this stuff, right? When you just spend five hours per week finding new things is that's not going to help you keep up with things <laughs> I think. no it's <laughs> not five hours maybe but like well i mean anyway you know if you yeah. spend so much time just try like so uh, the way that i keep up in the quotes air quotes is that i just follow a bunch of people on twitter right so the guys who are like from the javascript like react team from our xjs team mm -hmm. from angular team And I just look at what they are discussing, look at what they're working on and sort of see if, if, if a lot of them start retweeting or talking about the same technology, you know, that something good is happening. You know, so something is really, something really cool is happening right now because all mm -hmm. of those really experienced and really smart guys are talking about this thing. So this is how I typically do it. But I, you know, if I, if I would, if I would be tasked to find something really cool, X, Uh, like x times a week i don't think i would pull that off <laughs> yeah well you kind of do right now but 
Yeah, but it's like it's it's all completely random. So you know, if yeah. it's there, it's there. If it's not like uh, two weeks ago, the podcast it was nearly empty because people just went on vacation. You cannot find anything. Yeah, people just true. went on vacations and there's nothing to work on. It's like. But for us, it was like we have had to find something new that was new for us. So. Oh, okay, new for yeah. So okay, let's that's say definitely. Java is is new for you. You can. I'm I'm overthinking it again. Is, I'm yeah. thinking that how do you find like new things every like what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that makes it easier. <laughs> but true. it had to be obvious that it was new to you. So if mm -hmm. you kind of copy something that you already knew, they would find out because you're like your document would. Yeah, sure. But I mean, you always have the GitHub trending page, right? So this yeah. is really easy to discover new stuff. <laughs> I usually just looked up stuff up at medium.com and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, or medium. Yeah, they do have a training section. Of the program. And, and like random YouTube things. So yeah, so that's how that ended up. <laughs> but I got a nine out of 10 for my project. So it's pretty good. Nice. Yeah. So next question, uh, how do you keep a consistent schedule with creating content for YouTube? Oh, that is, that is really hard. <laughs> yeah, I, know. You, I mean, I literally force myself to just sit there and do a podcast. Like, uh, like with a podcast, it's a bit easier because I go mm -hmm. through those news anyway. So all I do is basically just save them and, you know, make a nice document out of them, which takes like five minutes, maybe not more. So the talking about them is also the easy part, but with, um, Streaming on Wednesdays, which I basically stopped because it's like 34, 37 degrees right here. And we're just like melting, especially during the weekdays when there's a lot of cars, you know, it's just like terrible. Mm -hmm. I, I really want to, but I just couldn't in the past month. Like it's, it's really hard to nail this, but I, I think it all just comes down to self discipline, you know, just sit down and do it. But I've been I'm doing not... uh, siestas as well. <laughs> I'm not the most disciplined person in, in the world. Let me just tell you. But yeah, you have been pulling it off, uh, pulling it off on the Saturday. So. I mean, it's it's okay. It's working yeah. somehow, you know. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I'm actually like, um, I want to do some creative stuff for my YouTube channel, but then I'm like, uh, I don't want to like. Put all those, that energy in while well, I also have like job and, and all this stuff I'm working on. And I'm, I want to do it on the side, but then I'm like, I don't have enough energy to <clears throat> to have like a good voice for YouTube right now. And that's like my, my issue. Maybe I'm overthinking I... it, but like. No, yeah, you are definitely overthinking it. <laughs> I think you just, you know, just sit down and just do it. And yeah, it's like. Yeah. I have, there's this YouTube paradox that I think a lot of creators are talking about is when, you know, when you spend like a week doing an amazingly good video with a lot of editing and super voice acting and everything, you put it out and you get like 10 views yeah. and then you record some crappy video where you just like talk on the camera and put it out and you get like thousands of views. That, that's, uh, that's a thing. Yeah, that's sure. literally a thing. You can never predict what will work. So you just sit down and do it. And if it's, like in case of software development, if it's useful for people, they will watch it. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, like my tutorials for Next.js, for example, is one of the like quite popular videos and the most like the data science, I guess nobody likes data science. So it's not that <laughs> popular. <laughs> so it's like, not you know, on YouTube, man. I guess it's just too niche. I, it's like, yeah. it's a very, uh, it's, it's an area that demands a lot of knowledge uh, before mm -hmm. you can actually do it. Right. Because it's like visualization, data cleaning, data gathering. And it's not that easy to get into. Yeah, and for whatever. web development, the market of YouTubers is pretty big. Like, there's a lot of content available already. So yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, I I think there's like most at this point, most of the markets that you can imagine are taken. There's nothing new you can really offer, but uh, YouTube, Twitch, all of those are never about the or they are not just about the content, right? So people don't come there to watch the content, they come there to watch you talk about the content. Mm -hmm. So they're, if they're interested in your personality, they will come back. If not, they will just say, hey, I don't care about this guy, his voice sucks, or you know, he's boring, <laughs> or I'll just leave. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's why I'm experimenting with showing my face more, because like, yeah, if you're just a voice and the voice is shit, there, there will be nothing left of you. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, I, I found it that even if you have a 
you know, good voice, unless it's something like radio mm -hmm. voice, which is like super sexy or whatever, but <laughs> you know, it's really rare. And actually putting a face to it is, is very, uh, positive. So it brings a lot more people and people kind of start interacting with you, especially on streams. So I don't know about the YouTube as much, but, uh, live streams have definitely on Twitch been like more and more interactive uh, from the audience side when you like actually show your reactions and they can see your face, they can see you thinking or, you know, face palming or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I know uh, one guy, like a gaming YouTuber, he has like a really good voice, but his face looks so ugly. <laughs> he got called out for that when he did a face review. <laughs> but he had like <laughs> oh, one guy. Oh. already, like... Yeah, things. come on, that, that's it's, just it's mean. <laughs> I mean, that's just mean. Like, you know, who cares how he looks if he does his job well? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think he was like a radio host or something, so... He, okay. And then he, he's also a gamer, so he made YouTube content. That's just <laughs> <Pretty> mean. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it wasn't that bad, but yeah, you know, shit happens. So, um... Are you happy with, with where your channel is right now? And do you have any goals or plans for the future? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I'm just, pl I, I would want to do more um, Wednesday streams, so like development streams, but mm -hmm. I think I'll start doing them once the weather is better, right? Because right now it's like, I just, I can't even describe it with words because I can't even work, you know, for a hundred percent. I just, I have my fan uh -huh. next to me which now I had to like turn uh, a bit lower and move it away from me because it, the microphone picks it up. Uh -huh. yeah. I have it literally next to me on the maximum power and just sitting here like, ah, just kill me. <laughs> I cannot work. Not to say about like streaming or anything. And it's been like this for two weeks already. And it's like, uh, I think the, the max temperature we had is plus 37, which is 10 degrees more than the average we have here usually. Yeah, so no, not the average. Then the maximum we had last year. Oh, yeah. Last yeah. year was like 27, 29, which was, you know, okay, hot, but fine. Yeah. This year is 37. It's just like, ugh, no. Yeah, in the Netherlands, it's like the same. Like yeah, the same I've, I've heard. I have a few friends in, in Amsterdam and they were complaining as well. <laughs> yeah. I also heard that you have no rains there. Uh, we have had one this summer, I think. <laughs> Like well, we we it's it's slightly better here. So we had like you know we have them regularly, but they're quite short. But we do have them. Like it's in, bit, and, and at least we in, have that. In the cities, it's way hotter than in the towns. Like yeah, like definitely. a five to ten degree difference, especially yeah. in in the feeling of the temperature. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, heated concrete is always like. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I mean, you know, other than just making more content i don't really have any plans i think you know i mean like i'm doing youtube for fun mm -hmm. so this is definitely not my income source or anything i like i recently i just recently turned on the monetization on youtube yeah. but not because i want money or anything but because i actually found out that the youtube ranks non-monetized videos lower than monetized oh yeah Which, sure it's like, <laughs> why is this a thing? But okay, you know, I guess if I want to be ranked properly in the search, I have to monetize my videos. And now, so I had to... like with the new system, you can't monetize your videos if you have a low subscriber count and stuff. I, I barely, so barely was like... above the threshold that was needed for monetization. It was oh. like, you know, a few, I think it was like, you need 6,000 minutes and uh, uh -huh. 2,000 subscribers. So subscribers 1, was fine. Yeah. Or 1,000 or whatever. Subscribers was fine, but the minutes was like, I had like 6,200 or something. So it was like just above the threshold. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and then it's even harder to get to that point. It's, it isn't like, yeah, we, we support small creators, but <laughs> if you don't monetize your videos, we'll derank them. Like, great. Just amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's YouTube in 2017, 2018. Yeah. Worse like, worse. Man, I, sometimes I wish I started like, you know, way before they started doing all this crazy stuff. Yeah. But, uh, it would well. be cool if you can get like a cup of coffee every, uh, every day from your money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be nice. But you know, I like, I, I think I've, I have a decent salary as a postdoc in university. So I'm not really complaining, but sure. But yeah. If I have more money for video games, I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> so I saw like with uh, software engineering YouTubers, they always have like a day in the life of 
uh, a software engineer video. Are you planning on doing that or are you interested in doing something like that? I think my day in life would be extremely boring because it would be me sitting at home in front of my computer, basically what you see right now and just working. Yeah, but that's like just like, literally coding. That's... I've always thought about that, like, um, um, like in in uh, colleges and university, the first year, like fifty percent leaves because they didn't know what they got themselves into, and sometimes yeah. even the next year, people will will like leave the the uh, like the the study, and. Um, what I was thinking about, what if I would do a like a day in the life of, but then an actual day in the life of, and then just film for 18 hours straight, and then upload it to <laughs> YouTube, just for those people who don't know what I they mean, get themselves into. <laughs> that might be amazing. On the other hand, you know, I think if I would do that, it would be just me like swearing into the camera, <laughs> trying to figure out the bugs and problems. Like, oh, why the hell is it not working? Yeah, um, that's true. basically all that would happen for like eight hours. <laughs> And like the other videos is basically like waking up at 6 a.m., uh, getting coffee, uh, getting breakfast, uh, traveling yeah. with my motorbike. And they wouldn't show any work at all, basically, because like it's... <laughs> but I mean, this is, what, this is what's interesting to watch, right? Because you see like how they, how they travel, what they do in the morning. It's more about the personality than the work, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But right. in my case, I work from home. I mean, I can show my cats, but that's basically... <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah. I think I won't make such a video. Maybe I will do a, a short one, but basically my life is either studying or working on my company, and my company is also at home, so yeah, that's that's not to really Totally fun. get that. <laughs> totally get basically that, yeah. in the same way. I, 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 think, I think there's another like category of people who can make fun videos out of anything, you know? These are the like super popular YouTubers are typically those guys who can just take anything, even the most boring topic and just make a crazy video out of it. And you'll be watching like, like this looks really cool. But then you think about it and it's like, okay, this is just this boring topic that everyone yeah. does. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, try it. Maybe you have this snack and maybe you will be super big famous YouTuber. <laughs> who knows? Maybe in the future because I'm still learning how to make videos. I, I also did gaming before this, but I <laughs> put that right in a, in, in, in a dark box because, like, <laughs> it was really shit. And also, one of my classmates started to um, uh, play my YouTube videos, like, uh, when I was having an assessment, like, just before oh, that. Oh, that's mean. That's <laughs> he, just was mean. he was blasting it <laughs> out of the speakers. Like, I could hear yeah, my own voice, and I was like, Dude, I have an assessment in five minutes. Please shut up. <laughs> and that is fortunately, he, he cared enough for me to actually do that. But then I was like, yeah. let's private all those videos and <laughs> never do that again. Yeah. No, I mean, I think I still enjoy streaming the games from, you know, from time to time. So I typically do it on like, uh, Sunday, we Sunday evenings. They might like just chill and play something and. Primarily to just chat with uh, Twitch chat, because as people just come to the stream and they usually are not as much interested in the game as much they're interested in talking to me, mm -hmm. which is also fine. You know, I'm okay with that. So it's like, once again, once the heat is gone, I'm planning to stream more of that and just you know interact with chat, talk about the software development, talk about video games if they want to, because you know I'm a huge fan, as you might have noticed. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, but yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um, actually about that story that I had, like, I obviously wasn't comfortable with those, those gaming videos, but how do you like, um, shut yourself down from all the haters or do you ever even have any haters about your content? Um, I mean, depends on what you define as haters. So I'm, you know, <laughs> so here's the thing. I'm Russian, right? So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, I, I grown up and was studying in Russia, like I finished the universities there. So I was like there for 22 years, I think, or something. And um, being Russian means that you don't really care about insults that much, as much as the European or American people, especially. <laughs> so I guess uh, 
being, you know, uh, trolls, I just don't react to. Like, I, I don't, I don't uh, perceive them as trolls. I just don't care about them as much. I had some mean comments on my software development videos. Like one of the most amusing ones was the guy who was like, "Oh, why are you doing these videos? Why don't you just write a, write a book like a good person?" I was like, "Why? Are, <laughs> are you crazy?" <laughs> I was just like, like laughing my ass. Yeah, that you it's, know you're it, doing something better than. I I don't know. It's like come on, like writing a book and making a video this is a bit different. You yeah, know? <laughs> but I I like it's just I never, I I think I just never had uh, insulting enough things happen that would get through to me because I'm just very thick skinned by nature. So I guess you know I just don't care. Even if someone turns on my video, I'll be like, hey, that's me. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, I guess that helps. For me, that was like <laughs> two years ago. So then I was also a bit younger and stuff like that. And that may, I think may, these you know, days may, I, I can uh, care less about it. And also like, like for software you... development, I would feel proud because it's it's good there content. Go. Like I know it's, it's important. Good yeah, content. it's important. I think every content that you produce is good. So don't don't think that anything you produce is bad. It might be. It might be like uh, cheesy, right? So uh, it might be just yeah. cheesy video game videos, and I have a lot of those, but it still will be good. Yeah, for my, <laughs> That's my, point for of my gaming it. videos, even my best friend would say, like, your videos are so cringy, and that's why he liked to, to watch them again and again. Fine, that's fine. Why not? <laughs> you know, you, everyone starts somewhere, and if you watch, there's the... Uh, you probably know, like, Total Biscuit, right? I don't no, know. No, never heard. Uh, yeah. he, he's like one of the, he was one of the biggest uh, critiques on YouTube. So he died okay. from cancer uh, this year. Okay. And uh, he like, he, ha he had really amazingly high quality videos in last years. But then if you go all the way back and watch the first one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was, that was, yeah. That <laughs> it was amusing as hell. Yep, yep, yep. So everyone starts somewhere, you know, that's not a big yeah, problem, I think. I think I should... Just keep continuing and like improve yeah, over just, time. Of course. If if you like, like I think the main point. thing is that you should like it. You know, if you like it, then just keep doing it. If you don't like it, then why even you for like why are you even forcing yourself to yeah, do something true. that you like, like? If I didn't like it, I wouldn't be doing it. I can assure yeah. you. That. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's wrap this interview that was planned for like 10, 15 minutes and is going along for. <laughs> for 30 minutes so final question do you have anything you want to share ask or do you want to do promotion or a shout out uh yeah sure subscribe to my youtube channel to my twitch channel to subscribe my to <laughs> yes to my to my soundcloud podcast uh castbox podcast twitter uh whatever the hell you want come to our discord server if you have any javascript questions or software development questions uh we'll be more than happy to help you with some advice and tips um and yeah i don't know that's that's basically about it. i mean check out exaframe if you want to if you want a self-hosted deployment tool it's really cool i wrote it <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um i think that's basically all i want to say <laughs> all right okay so that was it for uh this interview uh i hope you guys enjoyed uh if you're watching this and uh you want to be on one of my interviews you can always hit me up uh, leave a comment down below or uh, find my email in my bio and uh, I will see you guys in the next one